Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. Recently via email, I received a request to show how you could take the stock that was left over after the first setup and use that shape for following setups. So we're gonna take the video and show you how you can do this. And I'm only gonna show this for, you know, for the second setup after the first one, but you could take the methodology that I'm gonna show here and apply it after multiple setups to get your net shape stock to start from. This isn't the most elegant method in the world, and I have a feeling that Autodesk is working on a better way to do this, a more elegant and streamlined way. Uh, but I'm gonna show you the way that I know how to do it right now. And if you guys have new requests for, for things you'd like to see, don't be afraid to send me those requests to info at mechanicaladvantage.com. So let's jump in and see how we can do this. And we'll also see why I think Autodesk is working on a better way. So I'm gonna go up to my name first of all and go to preferences. And I'm gonna go down and find the preview features pane and I'm gonna switch this to manufacture. And if I scroll down a little bit, we're gonna see one called continue rest machining for milling. And it says reduce overall machining time by using continue rest machining to generate a toolpath over stock material that is left at the end of the operations from the previous setup, currently for milling only. So that kind of sounds like the ticket. Let's apply that and hit okay. And I'm just gonna take this model and flip it over. And I'm gonna create a setup, orient my Z axis the way I want it to be wherever I want this to be located, maybe I'll flop it out there. And when I go to my stock tab, you'll see it's from, from preceding setup, it's what it's called. And if I, there's an option here called continue rest machining. And it says when enabled, you can perform rest machining functions based on operations created in the previous setup. So a couple flaws here. One, it doesn't show me the stock of what it looked like in the previous setup. And two, notice how it says operations created in the previous setup, which is singular. So it's not gonna carry this over multiple setups currently, I believe is how this works. So I'm gonna hit cancel here, go back to my name and preferences. I'm gonna go back to the preview features and uh, I'm gonna turn off this option and hit apply and okay. We'll just hit the home button to get back to where I want to be. Now what I'm going to do is let's simulate this and see what I have going on so far. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the simulate button. I'll hit play. I'll let this go a little bit faster. But basically what it's going to do is it's going to face it, drill it. A 3D adaptive operation is going to come and remove the majority of the material. I'll just jump past that. Then I do a 2D adaptive that cleans out the rest of the contour at the bottom there, leaving a little bit of remaining stock and I would probably finish machining that if I was doing that in the real world. We do some surfacing machining. I'm just gonna let this go really fast and a chamfer around the very top. So there you can see what we're left with. There's what our stock would look like at this point. And this is what we want to use as our starting shape for OP2. So we only see that hat on the top and we get rid of it and we have the finished machine surfaces left over. So the way we're gonna do that is I'm now gonna right click and you'll see at the bottom of the right click, click menu, there's a stock option. And I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna say, I wanna save this stock. And I'm gonna call this stock, I'm just gonna call it stock.stl. That's the default name for it. I created a little folder on my desktop called X, STL export for this purpose. You can name this file whatever you want to and you can store it whatever you want to. One thing to note is an STL file is a mesh file. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and then I'm gonna close my simulation. The way that we work with that STL file is we have to go back to the design tab and I'm going to go to the insert menu and choose to insert a mesh. I'm gonna to browse to that folder where I kept my stock STL and I'm gonna hit open. And the one thing you'll notice is whatever units that we need to bring this in at. Now I'm gonna see if this is right, right off the bat or not and I'm gonna hit okay and see what we get. Now let's export the bodies and I'll turn this off and you can see that my stock is way huge compared to my part that I want to machine. It looked okay at first until we realized it was, you know, much larger than what it is I want to machine. So let's just go ahead and delete uh, this mesh body off and we'll delete it. the other mesh body that I have here. I'm going to cancel here. Uh, this is something I did previously. And let's zoom in. Now the way we're going to do this is we're going to insert the mesh 
I'm gonna browse that same mesh file and I'm gonna hit open, but the key here is don't open it an inch, open it as millimeters. And now I'll hit okay. And now when I turn the mesh on and off, you'll see that it matches my file that I'm working with. Okay, so I can leave that off. We're gonna to go to design back to manufacture. I'm gonna roll this back over again to get ready for op two. And I'm gonna to choose to create a setup. I'll get my WCS oriented the way that I want it to be. And then I'm gonna go over to my stock tab and I'm gonna hit the drop down and I'm gonna choose from a solid. Now I'll go to my models node in my browser and expand this out until I find that mesh body and I'll click on that. And then I can put this WCS where I want it to go. I'll put it on the top for this particular example. I'm just gonna go drop it out there. And on my models tab, I wanna make sure that I have a body that's selected. So I'm just, I think it's the right one, but I just wanna make sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on body one. Now I know it's the right one and I'll hit okay. So now you can see that my stock looks like exactly what it looked like, including the, the 2D adaptive that went through and the drilled holes that go through the part, exactly what it looked like after I ran my simulation on my uh, previous operate, uh, my previous setup. So let's go back to manufacture now. I have my setup. I'm gonna do a 3D adaptive clearing. I'm gonna go select a tool and the tool I'm gonna use is gonna be this half inch end mill. Now, I'd probably use a face mill if I was doing this, but just to show a point of what's gonna happen, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. And then for my geometry, I'm not gonna select anything. Anything in the yellow box is what I want to machine. On the heights, I wanna go from the stock top to the model top. So we're gonna go stock top to model top. Uh, not gonna make a lot of changes here. I'm gonna turn on flutter detection in order by area. I'm gonna leave 10 thousandths of an inch of stock, I'm gonna type that in the right way, both for wall and floor, radial and uh, axial. And then on the linking tab, I'm gonna say I want this tool to pretty much stay down. I'm gonna give it a micro lift to 0 0.01. And I'm gonna say that this no engagement feed rate is 400. Now when I hit okay, I'm gonna get a tool path that calculates over the top of this model, but notice that it's looking a little different than it would if this hole wasn't in here or these other holes. Notice how Fusion is adapting the tool path to look at the stock that I use for the setup. So hopefully that gives you an idea how you can do this. Now remember, I can now simulate the stock from OP1 and OP2. I could run a simulation on this. I'll just hit play and let this go really fast. I could have started that from the adaptive in the bottom, but you'll get the idea. Now when this finishes up, we would just have that little bit of material left on the top. And I could again right click and choose stock, uh, uh, save stock and save this as my starting shape, bring it back in and repeat, repeat that process over again one more time and do that for my next setup. So hopefully that helps. It's not the best workflow we have, but it's a workflow that will that will is better than nothing right now. Hopefully Autodesk continues to improve this and we see some real benefits in their work. Uh, time will tell if we, if we will see that or not. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And like I said, if you have any email suggestions you'd like to send me, info at mechanicaladvantage.com. And as always, thanks for watching.